This morning I figured that we would do a bit of a quick run through all of the work queued up that we've got. It was a great time at Armourfest, but it's left us with one hell of a hangover as far as work to be done, so let's get into it. Okay, starting off, so we've got the uh, SU-76. This thing didn't even make it to the start of Oz Armour because in the process of driving it out, it actually broke the clutch. So we're waiting on a new set of clutch discs to be manufactured for this so that we can put it back together. And then there's the Gaffard. Developed a coolant leak that requires the engine pack to be taken out. And while we're at it, we're going to do a whole bunch of other bits of preventative maintenance that you can only do when the engine's out. I cannot get the guns to elevate. And in order to get the engine pack out, I've got to have the barrel out of the way. So there's some issue with the elevate mechanism that's got to be fixed. Either that or I've got to work out how to remove the barrel so that we can lift the pack. So that's what's holding things up on this on the Stug 3. As this thing's getting close as far as the interior fit out goes, need to start doing the wiring on it. So wiring up the engine gauges, all that sort of hoo-ha. There's some fine tuning to be done with the Panzer 1. We'll obviously be helping the boys out with potentially looking at some upgrades to the drivetrain of that. But I've got to say, it looks brilliant next to its older siblings. Panther worked really well. Although one of our eagle eye viewers did notice that the spark plug leads from the right hand bank of cylinders look like they could have been arcing. So that's something I want to have a look at. OT810 developed a bit of an oil leak, so got to check that out. The flak half track ran really well, although it's developed a problem with the brake system, the air pump intermittently is not working and the brakes work on air, so we've got to check that out. Panzer 4J was a real trooper during the event. The tracks are pretty droopy on it, so we've got to adjust the track tension on both sides. To adjust the track, we're going to have to take some track links out because the adjusters are maximum travel on this side anyway. Oh, and there's a bit of panel beating to do with the, these mud guards. They have a bit of a hard life during the event. Someone's obviously backed into something like this, so we need to fix that so it doesn't get crunched up in the track system. Uh, 38T, it was shedding rubber off the road wheel, so we've got them off to have new rubber put on it. So I've got to have a look at reverse gear on this because it slips in reverse, so it doesn't like to turn and reverse at the same time. Uh, in between everything else, we've got the Vesp here. Uh, we've got plans to make this a runner. Tell you what, it's looking pretty complete. Super rusty, but pretty complete. Transmission, clutch, all of the coupling. Even the radiator. Though the engine's looking pretty crook. If the engine block's in good condition, I guess that's one thing that's pretty, uh, pretty unique about it. Looking forward to getting my teeth stuck into this. Sherman Firefly, still got a few dramas with the cooling system. Graham did a sterling job on this and replaced the old worn out buggered rubber tracks with proper metal combat tracks. Ram Kangaroo, track needs to be adjusted. The actual adjuster itself, sort of almost at this nine o'clock, three o'clock position, which means that you can't get any more tension on the track. And also the grease seal is leaking. Uh, from the hub, so if there's grease leaking out, it means that water and dirt and stuff can get in. Ugh, where do I start here? T3476. Uh, the clutch is not disengaging properly, so it makes changing gears even harder than it normally is. Tracks aren't sitting right on the road wheels, so the track's got to be tensioned. Plus, just a full check over the fuel filters, oil filters, check for any nasties in the oil system, and also try and sort out a few of the standard oil leaks that these things come with then moving on to the t3485 it's evil twin so there's sort of almost a carbon copy of the same issues on this one as uh, the 76 <laughs> funny about that you can hear this awful shrieking noise that it's making from final drives or transmission so i'm expecting something awful to be in there so quite a bit of major surgery it's got too much oil pressure 
So with any engine, not enough oil pressure is bad, but too much oil pressure is also bad as well too. So that, that's going to need to be looked at. ISU-152, a few dramas with steering. I made some temporary repairs to it and it was good enough to, to be used, but in order to do a permanent fix on it, I'm going to have to remove the engine oil tank out from inside the hull to access the control linkages, which is not going to be an easy job. You can also see that the tracks are particularly droopy, so track tension adjust needs to be done. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this because the <laughs> pretty heavy duty looking tracks, so that's going to take some effort to do that. Uh, SU100 hasn't been used for a long time because it's got surprise, surprise steering issues. Huge amount of fiddling around with the steering brakes and adjustment and checks and all that sort of stuff. Both the half track and the M8 Greyhound did tons and tons of laps, but they both wore out their starter motors, so they're off being overhauled. The Jackson behaved itself pretty well but a few little oil leaks and stuff to have a look at plus it's got a diesel fuel leak that's uh, popped up from somewhere it's a soviet engine so it's always going to be a bit of a leaker jason would sure love it if we had a go at getting the sentinel tank running up how much effort it's going to be to resuscitate it and get it going it's a different story we'd love to be able to do that the 110 uh you see it's sprung some sort of engine oil leak i think and it's also got an ongoing issue where diesel is getting into the engine lubricating system that we really need to fix that because the diesel oil just overfills the engine and it destroys the lubricating properties of the engine oil so it can be accelerating wear of the engine so we've got to really fix that my friend the bat ran well and <laughs> would you look at that it's almost completely leak free. I'll take that as a success story. Spartan, it's another vehicle that's shedding rubber off its road wheels. So I've got a bunch of them off to get uh, relined and repaired. Something's wrong with the clutch system and it started smoking and overheating and clutch lost drive. So that's gonna require some major disassembly of the uh, system. Saladin armored car, it's got no brakes. We topped up oils in the drivetrain before Armour Fest which now is leaking back out of the wheel hubs again. The Sabre, close relative to the Spartan in terms of the, I think the basic hull layout, except this one's got the Jaguar petrol engine while the other one has got Cummins diesel. It started making a truly horrible noise from the clutch assembly, so something's gone dreadfully wrong and it's another job to do. <laughs> and this is a real itch that I can't wait to scratch. We really want to get the Pion running again. So apparently it was driven into the museum many moons ago, but it hasn't run since then. And being a Soviet vehicle, you're probably just, probably just going to need to put some batteries in it and pour some fuel down its gullet and uh, it'll, it'll start up and run, but probably won't want to steer. Ah, the T72, man alive. It's like the Exxon Valdez under here. Uh, so there's some weird engine oil leak that uh, we're going to have to troubleshoot on before we can use it for next year. M48 looked great, ran great, real crowd pleaser and uh, joy to drive apparently. A few little jobs on it, mostly to do with track tension and also there's a track link here that the track pin is not fitted in properly that we've got to replace that or fix it this part of the museum i guess we call it resus row here so we've got the centurion m47 and the chieftain that are all on the list for reanimation so these are all runners there is all tanks which have been driven in here but they haven't subsequently been driven for a long time so this is going to be a bit of fun to get them going i'm certainly going to be channeling a bit of help from you, Mr. Hughes, when it comes to the Centurion and the Chieftain. While we're up here, on the M46, there's something pretty cool about this thing. First thing, when you get inside the tank, you realize that there's a lack of controls in front of you. So normally you've got some big sticks to pull on or 
something else to push or prod but instead you've got this thing here that looks like a proto game controller but it's a combined um, gear shifter I guess and tiller for steering the tank so moving lever forwards and backwards selects forward reverse and high and low range while moving the shifter left to right is what actually steers the tank so I'm really looking forward to driving this thing so it should be quite a bit of fun uh, and then finally we've got the T55 so looking underneath it it's mostly oil leak free which is a win but what was not so good was that uh, it developed uh, an issue with trying to turn right something slipping inside the clutch system for the steering brake on the right hand side because it got smoking hot so that's going to take a bit of investigation to see what's happening with it otherwise it ran really well strong no overheating no leaking